Hey friends, I hope you are having a great Wednesday. Welcome back to our Wednesday Word. We are continuing our series, Marks of a Methodist, and today we're going to be talking about our membership vows. If you're not a Methodist, you might be thinking, membership vows? What is that? Well, we do it a little old school here in the UMC because when you become a part of the Methodist Church, we ask you to stand up in front of the congregation and to make to take vows or to make a commitment to support whatever local church you're becoming a part of through five ways. And those are your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. And this is an incredibly important part about being in a local church because when you stand up and when you, when you pledge your support of the church, the community, the people gathered there in the service with you also reaffirm their commitment, the same commitment or the vows that they took when they became members. And the community also commits to support you in your faith journey. We're all in this together. That's how we see it. And so it seems old school, but it really is about accountability in our discipleship. Now, I've heard pastors say, even United Methodist pastors, I've heard pastors say, I don't want more members, I want more disciples. I don't want to make members, I want to make disciples. And I, I totally get where they are coming from. But here's what I have come to understand. If you are living out the five membership vows of the UMC, if you are striving to meet these five goals to support your church through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness, then you are actively being a disciple of Jesus Christ in every way. How, you might ask. Well, I'm very glad you did. That's what we're going to be talking about today. This week, we're going to be talking about the first two membership vows, prayers and presence. But before we get started, I want to read a passage of scripture to you from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. It says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now, the Hebrews church was undergoing a lot of things, persecution and uncertainty, and they believed Jesus was coming back immediately, but the writer of Hebrews says, keep meeting together. Keep praying for each other and then encourage each other in the hope that you have for as long as Christ takes to return. So we'll start with our prayers today. We start with prayers in general because prayer is what keeps us connected to God. Prayer is powerful, we believe. Many times before Jesus would perform a miracle, he would offer, he would offer a prayer even more often, we see in the Gospels that Jesus would steal away from the crowds and from the disciples to be alone for a time of prayer and meditation. It was very foundational to who Jesus was and to his ministry. I would argue that an essential foundation for any ministry is prayer. If we feel like God is calling us to do something, we should first pray about it. If we uh, feel disconnected from God, we feel like we haven't had that relationship that we once had, we should pray about it. If we walk outside and notice that it's a gorgeous day and, and we feel grateful, then we should say a prayer to God and thank God for it. Prayer is that anchor that, that, that keeps us tethered and grounded in our faith. Now, for Wesleyan Christians like us and for John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, a life of prayer was also intrinsically linked to scripture study. When we read our Bibles, the stories and the verses are illuminated by our prayers. And when we pray, our prayers are formed and shaped by what we have read about God in the Word. There's one more thing I believe prayer does. It links us to our community, to, t to each other. Have you ever asked for prayer for something? I know there are times when I've needed something for myself or for a friend, and I know those people that I want to call and ask them to pray. And, and a lot of times it's uh, people in my own church, and then I have 
folks in my parish church that I will send my request to because I know that they will pray for me. Have you ever gone through a really tough time, but even through the midst of it, you have felt wrapped in prayer? There's something incredibly powerful about that. There's something powerful about knowing that you have people on your side that, who would drop in anything and everything to lift you up or your loved ones up in prayer. Here at Elm Springs, we have a wonderful prayer team who meets weekly to pray for all of our various concerns, but we also print our, and list our prayers and our concerns with permission in our weekly updates so that everyone in the community can lift up the needs of everyone else because it's our responsibility and our privilege to do that. Prayer is incredibly important. But that brings us to our next membership vow which is our presence. Being present is important to the life of the church. It is vital. And right now, with so many other things in this world vying for our time and for our attention, it, giving our presence to a specific community every single solitary week is about one of the most countercultural things that we can do. And being an active part of a church community is one of the primary ways in which we grow in our faith. John Wesley included attending worship along with prayer in his list of means of grace. Means of grace are those spiritual acts that help God do the work of transforming our lives, that open us up to that work that God wants to do in us. When we think about presence, a lot of times we just think about Sunday morning attendance. And that's a good place to start. Because when the average churchgoer only attends services about two times a month, it, it means something to come and worship together. But sharing your presence with your church community is, is so much more than just showing up to church. It's showing up when your brothers and sisters are in need. It's showing up to your neighbor's house with a casserole or a spare tool. It's being a part of small groups and Bible studies and supper clubs and coming to the potlucks because those are the times when our relationships are built and our faith in Jesus is sharpened. And then we gather to remind ourselves, we gather on Sundays and, and during the week to remind ourselves that when we go back into the world, we represent Jesus. But if we don't show up, if we aren't present, if, then we don't get that reminder and we can't help hold each other accountable either. So if you're a part of a church, and especially a United Methodist Church, I want you to know that your prayers and your presence really do matter. So I hope that helps you understand the first part of our membership vows. And next week, we're going to be talking about what it means to support our church with our gifts, our service, and our witness. Before we pray, I want to share an announcement with you. We have a new small group opportunity starting next Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. This is a church-wide study, but even if you're not part of Elm Springs, you can join from wherever you are. We're going to be looking at the TV series, The Chosen, which tells the story of Jesus' life as based on the scriptures. And so I invite you to download the app and watch the first episode for free and then come next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. and join us as we reflect on what we've watched and what we've learned. If you have any questions, leave them below or send us a message, and we would love for you to be a part of that. If you have any prayer requests, you can also follow the link in the comments to leave those and so that we can lift you up in prayer as well. Let's pray. God, we thank you that you've put us in communities where our presence matters, where we get to lift one another up in prayer, and most importantly, where we get to encourage each other to keep our faith in our relationship with you strong. Lord, help us to be present in times when it feels like we are isolated. Help us to be present in times when it feels like we are all alone. And help us to be present in, in times of joy and times of sadness so that we continue to grow together. It's in your name we pray. Amen.